Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be going over another Just Call Me Coco device, his new C5 war driver. Just Call Me Coco makes really awesome boards, like the Marauder C5 adapter board, which has become my everyday carry. We're going to be installing the ESP32 C5 from our C5 Marauder board to our C5 war driver. That's a whole lot of C5s. And if you just grabbed yourself a C5 war driver, feel free to follow along. So war driving is becoming very popular in the tech community. It's sort of like Pokemon Go for tech enthusiasts. War driving is not hacking. You're not connecting to any networks and you're not doing anything malicious. You are simply surveying. You're scanning the 2.4 gigahertz band and 5 gigahertz band and pinning those signals to GPS coordinates. And war driving can become very, very useful when you want to find dead zones or studying signal interference. Now to use our C5 war driver, we're going to need an ESP32 C5 dev kit, just like this one. The ESP32 C5 is a 32-bit RISC-V single core processor with clock speeds of 240 megahertz. Now there's two iterations of the C5 dev kit. There is this one that has no UFL connector and there's another one with a UFL connector. I believe typically when Just Call Me Coco drops uh, boards and different cases, he makes them so that they adapt so you can print out different cases for you to attach a SMA antenna and give your ESP32 C5 better range. Now first we're gonna go over the enclosure. It's got the Just Call Me Coco logo on the face as well as three buttons and a screen. It's all held together with these four screws. You've got four status LEDs on the side, an on and off switch, and the case can be mounted with a MagSafe mount. I think that's a really nice feature. It's just a little bit under four inches long, a tiny bit under three inches wide, and just a tiny bit over 1.2 inches thick. On the inside, you got that MagSafe mount, which is a nice addition to the case. I'm not gonna lie to you, this is this is a nice touch. Now the PCB is really nice. We went over the display, the three tack switch buttons, up, down, center. It says C5 War Driver on the board, as well as the Just Call Me Coco logo, and the Just Call Me Coco website on the bottom. The GPS antenna fits perfectly in that little enclosure right there. That way it doesn't just start shaking around and I like little details like this man. We're gonna take a quick look at the back of the PCB and it's very nice. We have our 18650 battery holder right there and our micro SD card slot. Make sure that the polarity of your battery is correct. Positive should be facing the micro SD card slot. Our GPS module is the ATGM336, which I personally use on my projects. They're very reliable and they do the job just fine. We also have four status LEDs, one for power, one for GPS, one ACT, and one for charging, our on and off switch, and female headers for our ESP32 C5 dev kit. But we're not gonna install our dev kit just yet. Now before we install our ESP32 C5 dev kit, we're gonna need to flash it first. And if you need to find the GitHub repo, I've put it in the descriptions just to make it easier for you. Now first, first we're gonna head over to github.com and go to Just Call Me Coco's GitHub page and go to the ESP32 dual band war driver repo. Once we go there, if you're using Windows, we're gonna go to code and download zip. Then we're gonna extract all and from here, we go to ESP32 dual band war driver main click that and you'll see C5 PY flasher. Now you also want to make sure that you've installed Python as well as installed the ESP32 drivers. I've linked both of them in the description down below as well. So head over to Python, install Python, and go down to the ESP32 drivers and download the ESP32 drivers as well. You need to do these two steps to be able to use the C5 PY flasher. In the files you've extracted, go to C5 PY flasher, click C5 PY flasher, and then the C5 flasher. It's a Python file, so you can't miss it. After you click it, you'll find Mr. AWOK's name right here. And it'll tell you that it's waiting for the ESP32 C5 to be plugged in. Now before you plug in your USB-C port, you wanna make sure you're holding down that boot button right there on the right. Now while you're holding the boot button and plugging it in, you'll see it'll say, are you ready to flash the ESP32 C5 flasher? Type in Y and then press enter. It'll take a few seconds to load and you can let go of the boot button now. The terminal window will close on its own and that's it, you flashed your war driver. Now we're not quite done yet. You see that little jumper right there? That is going to have to come off. So make sure you remove that 3.3 volt jumper before you install your ESP32 C5. And from here, we can just plug in our ESP32 C5 like so. Make sure it's lined up perfectly and it is. So we're gonna push that down and now we're good to go. Now we can install our 18650. So once again, we're gonna check the polarity of our battery, make sure positive is facing up. 
plug that in just like that. Ooh, it's a tight fit. And let's uh, let's turn that off. Why is that on? Make sure that that's off. I uh, I, th I thought I, <laughs> I thought it was off. Now that everything's perfectly in place, the first thing we're gonna do is take our GPS antenna, the little ceramic antenna. We're gonna place it right there, and then we're going to at an angle place it right there. Make sure none of the wires are poking out, which they are. There we go, perfectly in place. Slide it right there. Then we take our switch, and with our switch we place it right slide it right there in the middle make sure it'll stick in place there we go ah perfect yeah now it's ready for the face and we can screw everything back in place Now upon startup, you can see the Just Call Me Coco logo right there on that tiny display. And it will not start up until you plug in your SD card, which lines up perfectly as well as the USB-C port. So let's plug that in. And from here, it tells us that the AP that it's giving off, which is the access point, you can scan Wi-Fi on your phone, for example, it'll come up as C5 War Driver. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn this on and you should see the Just Call Me Coco logo right there. And it won't actually activate until you plug in your SD card, which is what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna plug in our SD card. And now it's giving off a Wi-Fi access point, which is right here. We're gonna press C5 War Driver. And the password for the C5 War Driver is C5 War Driver. And here, it'll tell us to put in our Wiggle API name and our Wiggle API token. We can also set it to upload directly from the device. So every time it connects, it'll just upload to Wiggle on its own. Now, after we've added our SSID to our home network, as well as our Wiggle API name and our Wiggle API token, that is it. We hit save. And from here, it'll upload on its own. Now, after setting up, which can take a little bit of time because those tokens are really long, I'd recommend you copy and paste, the interface is quite simple. It'll tell you if it's in standby mode or if it's in war driving, and it'll tell you the actual file name it's saving to. If we press down, it'll take you straight to the log. We can go to that log and press upload and we're done. Or we can delete that file, but what I really like is if we go all the way back, it'll tell you how many signals, BLE signals and Wi-Fi signals that you've picked up and mapped. Right now we don't have a fix, but as soon as we step out of the house, we're pretty much good to go. They have what I'd like to hope is a dashboard mount. You could mount this in your vehicle and see how many of each signal you've mapped out. It also tells you the battery at the top. Now, remember, this won't work without an SD card. As a matter of fact, we plug that out and nothing will save anywhere. Now, when Just Call Me Coco launched the C5 Marauder board, it became my everyday carry. The issue is when you're war driving with a Flipper Zero, uh, if you have it placed in the cup holder or somewhere it's not really secure and you hit a bump or you shift ever so slightly, well, it'll stop war driving. This I would call a dashboard solution to war driving, something that's secured in place that keeps war driving even if you hit a bump or a wrong turn and as soon as you park out front or you get near your home network, it'll just upload. And that's simplicity, and I like it. If you were interested in grabbing yourself a C5 war driver, you can do so on Just Call Me Coco's website directly. Also, there are war driving teams, like actual teams that contribute to a global leaderboard, and people are fighting for the top as well as teams are fighting for the top. If you're interested in joining one of these teams, such as NerdSec, which is arguably the best war driving team there is, shout out Kinda Geeky, you can do so in the descriptions. I'll post a link to it. And it's a great way of engaging with the community, a little bit of competitive fun. And you know, it lets you uh, turn driving into a sport that isn't racing. Make sure you're driving safe while war driving, please. I'd like to thank you guys so much for the love and support. I can't tell you how much I appreciate each and every one of you for everything. I look forward to making better and better videos for you guys. We go over different variations of tech daily in our YouTube shorts every single day, if you're interested. Every single day. So, we'll see you next time.